Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of my track Wicker, uh, which was from Elephant Music's album Throat 3, um, and has been used on the trailers for The Lodge and The Dublin Murders. And um, this was an experimental one, uh, as was Throat 3 in general. Uh, so this one was recorded using three cellos to double bass, and then we overdubbed a few more cello parts on it. Uh, now, I'm all for transparency as well on this, because I wanted to show you this file, because it is a mess. <clears throat> now, I'm all for templates, uh, improved workflow, etc., 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 but sometimes writing music is just a bit messy, because you're not involved in the process in the same way. Now this track was very organic, so we did this recording session, I went into the recording session with ideas, basically like small riffs, um, that I got the players to do. Uh, and in this instance, the riff was, I believe it's this, yes. The riff started its life as the players muting all the strings with their left hands and then swiping the strings, basically plucking the strings, but all of them, uh, to the rhythm of bum, 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 bum. Okay. Like an insanely simple rhythm. Uh, and I just got them to do a few different variations on that. Um, so plucking it, uh, using the, the bow, the wood of the bow. So Colenio, uh, really digging in with some scratches. It was all sorts of very experimental stuff. So uh, <clears throat> I got sent by the engineer the recording files. So rather than opening up a template and being like, mm, yes, let's let's make this all neat and sexy, I just went with the flow. Uh, and I wanted to make something interesting sounding. So I took that file that you've just heard and did this to it. Distorted it like bonkers, because I wanted it to sound like a drum. Uh, and then obviously I added an EQ to take out that kind of horrible wobbly crunch and then put it in some reverb. So kind of like, I imagined it like a, a distant drum, you know, so many things are distant when I'm doing Chinese music, like a distant war drum of like a, a band of orcs. Yes. And then I just took that and I thought, okay, well, it's going to need some more layers on it, isn't it? It's going to need something else. So same thing, just EQ'd it differently and put it through an echo. Subtle, and then I have all of these chaps here, which all happen at the same time. So this is them playing it as pits. <laughs> it's, not, it's nothing crazy going on here, guys. Okay. So all this stuff you see at the top here, this was me editing what I had from the session. So you can see I'm just I'm just taking the that audio here and this audio from the original session piano uh, and then affecting it. So again, so what have I got here? Compressed the you know compressed the beans out of it. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Uh, Chucked an EQ on so that uh, we took out the low end so it wasn't taking up too much space. Took out the high end detail so it sounded more like a bass. Put a noise gate on it because it was getting a bit silly. Uh, and then obviously this, one of my favorite settings, mid driver on Santos Decapitator. It's very, very nice. And then obviously chucked it through a simple ancient church. Uh, which is cool, and then I've got another session, another little... So this is them just digging in, right? Really like... Uh, 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 just to give it more impact. And all I'm doing here is just building the layers. I'm just building the layers of the same riff. And 
then double timing it. Bam, bam, bam. Well, not double timing it, doubling it up. So rather than waiting a certain amount of bars, rather than eight bars, say I went to four bars. Uh, classic way to make your trailer queue feel like it's building in urgency, just to increase the amount of times you hear something. Um, uh, yeah, so that was the first bit, and you know, obviously sketched this bit out here at the top, and I was thinking, yeah, okay, oh, yeah, they've obviously got some higher higher elements here. I think it's uh, these ones here, thirty two and thirty four, um, which is them scraping uh, by the bridge with their hands, just random notes, <laughs> kind of like in uh, Psycho, uh, and then obviously got to this bit, and I was like, mm, I'm not sure I can carry on this for another minute and 20 seconds, so. Some horribly messy riff here. Oh, dun, 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 But it's got something cool and organic about it, which is... Uh, a huge thing of the throat series is that organic sound uh, where, you know, I don't think I even, no, I didn't. I didn't, didn't even sort out the timing on these guys. You know, that was just purely like chuck them in and see how it sounds. So if I play it along with all these others, so you've got that layer of bomb, 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 bomb. I love this when string players just mute and grit, dig the grit in for their bow. Really, it's like as if they're trying to saw the strings off. It's just, yeah. <laughs> it's very exciting. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, and then I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to run with this riff, um, which I did. <laughs> So you can hear they've taken, again, like I said, I just came in there with a couple of riffs and I asked them to play those riffs in different articulations. Um, and then obviously I used some glissandos, which they played. Oh no, it wasn't them. That's, that's actually from the samples that I used. Um, from a recording session in Budapest, I got them to do all sorts of risers and I turn it into an instrument which you can buy at the trailer music school.com. Uh, it's a fantastic little instrument just for creating that horrible, unnerving sense of something's happening to me. You know, it's great. Um, again, like I said, I am showing you this. I, I kind of want to show you guys, like, my tracks aren't always beautifully coloured and summed and rooted, lovely, you know, in all the lovely ways. Uh, uh, you can run me tomorrow. Um, sometimes it's just a mess, and this is a, a great example of a mess. Um, right. <clears throat> My next step was obviously to uh, pad those out. So, the introducing the drums. Um, so, where are you, drums? I should I should probably color code this now, shouldn't I? Come on. Okay, so just adding in a bass drone to add in an extra element. My good friend Trillian there. Okay, so part of my sound for this album for Throat Three was these two, which was the Tycho from Hans Zimmer's percussion for bit for audio, and the the doll from the same library. Um, and all I did was I wanted to create like just a, a horrible drum sound, not horrible like oh that's tinny, but like horrible as it like going back to my orc war party, just something interesting, you know, like this. Yes. Sounds like some enormous drum played with the head of an elf or something, you know. Uh, and the same with this, this I've called it fat with a PH, you know. I don't know whether you have that in your country, but you know, something we say in the UK. Now, 
Now, I saw, so what the cap- decapitator does is it doesn't necessarily like it's like the louder you play, it kind of acts as a compressor. So the louder you play, the more distorted the sound becomes. It's just just lovely. So you get these. Oh, yes. And then I've got this one as well, mashed plastic, which is plastic from uh, damage. Nothing hugely complicated. <laughs> and then another one called the Punchy Jun. The Jun Jun. All put through Santoy's decapitator. I don't think this one was, though. No, I just added this for a bit more, bit more of a clean sound, you know, just in case everything was going to go. Okay, so this one was, I took the sticks that you get in uh, Damage's Armageddon kit, brought them close, and compressed them. So they're like my little goblins, playing their little sticks at the front, and then I've got my my ridiculous, like, 70 foot drum. And then I've got my my plastics being bashed about, you know, they're kind of like oil drums made of plastic. And then I do like to add in a reverse sound. Which we will hear. Ugh. Yeah, it's kind of that, it's that horrible compression you only get when something is way too loud in your ear and you feel like your eardrum's going to like implode and die. Uh, so yeah, that that was my drums. And then I started just expanding that, that rhythm. Uh, just making sure, oh, don't get there yet. I'm just basically re-emphasizing that rhythm whilst keeping this, you know. I'm a big, big fan of having a straight rhythm played at the same time as a more dynamic rhythm going on at the same time. Because it just because they play off they play off each other. Yeah, I don't think I can click that. Oh, I won't try that again. My apologies. Okay. <laughs> So I'm almost positive I had other things going on, like this. <laughs> yes. Okay, this is where my orc metal band arrives with their, with their uh, drop C guitars. And their strange double basses played through probably Sound Toys Decapitator. Yes, there we are. Okay. I'm surprised this project isn't crashing all over the place, the amount of instances of that I have going on. So, again, I like musically, I've got this. One, two, three, four. That's that's my first idea. My second idea is that's that's all that's that's what this cue is. Um you know, then I thought to myself, okay. I'm going to need to get some other parts going on here. So I bought my friend Tim in. His name's not Tim in. I bought my friend Tim to come and play cello. Um, who is, if the cello sounds nice or well played, it's Tim playing. If it sounds anything else, it's me, usually. Uh, I think that's everything. So yeah. So I've got this drone. Uh, which was actually Tim playing um, uh, stop that uh, Tim playing with the, the wood of his bow so you get these lovely sounds whilst he was doing that and then I think I literally just got him to do a closer sound single cello of the rhythm yes there's the kind of like short scratches this, uh, I've got it gross bass, uh, gross cello bass. Let's have a listen to that, shall we? I want to hear that without, without the decapitator. So you can hear he's, he's like digging into the point where the, the note itself is bending. Uh, 
and then obviously chuck that through Decapitator. And that's nice, but I just want to hear the reverb. That shouldn't be sounding. Let's just move that. Oh, there we go. Accidents do happen. Uh, so yeah, just focusing on the rhythms again. And then just bringing a straight rhythm, double time. Again, I wasn't that worried about timing. And then... Just a single sound. Uh, just to add a little bit more depth. To tail off. And then I've just got the... Oh, you should have been up there, shouldn't you? So you can hear what I've done. I've basically just got Tim, the cellist, to do exactly the same as the other three cellists and double bass, but hot mic'd it in my room. Uh, so what I mean by hot micing is I literally put the mic as close to it as possible to the point where it almost uh, distorts and clips. <laughs> Okay, so I just want to show you this little guy. Uh, that's part of my weird drum sets. It, it's not actually the G. You can't see the GY, but again, weird drums. Which this was me playing all sorts of junk from the garden. I just turned them into loads of instruments. Um, in fact, I used them almost exclusively on. Uh, a trailer that just got synced for a film called Ready or Not. Uh, all sorts of weird junk. Again, you can buy this instrument um, on the, the the Trailer Music School website and the shop where I have all my sample libraries and sample packs for sale there. So you can you can literally see idea one, idea two. Um, and then what happens is you get to this point and you go, okay, how many times can I really get these riffs repeating? So I need, I need like something crazy. One of my favorite things to do is to have an absolutely bonkers and very short final third. Well, it's not a third, really. Final act. Um, and that's what I've done here, because I kind of think, where do I really go from this? I know. Change the rhythm, make it feel faster, and make it feel like manic. This is kind of like the chase scene. You know, this is... Uh this is where our, our, our hero, Goblin, feels a bit like, yeah, I'm, I'm winning the race. This, I'm doing really well. You know, I'm a bit cool. And then here, he stumbles. He's realized he's broken his leg, but they're still chasing him. <laughs> Etc. then a massive door falls on him. Yeah, I like that. You can even hear me pressing the space bar. Um, okay. It's a really simple cue, this. It looks like a crazy mess. It sounds a bit like a crazy mess in parts, but it's getting placements. Uh, so why do you think that is? Uh, because of its simplicity and the way that it builds. The bits that have been used are these ones here. Because it paints the picture, you have a sense of scale and, and a sense of character straight away. And then you've got these interesting sounds that come in. It feels like it's changing. 
Okay, that's gross. I like it. It's got me thinking. Still really simple. I'm building on the idea with layers of texture. And another thing, I'm leaving space. And I know when to then take it up a notch. Okay, so simple ideas. And you can see, okay, aside from the fact that I have used um, maybe a couple of expensive plugins, uh, to get me a, a horrible distorted sound and the Spitfire samples. These are cellos uh, we recorded live. Yeah, these ones are recorded in a nice studio, but Throat 2 is almost exclusively me in a room record hot micing a cello. And sometimes I use this mic, you know. I, <laughs> it doesn't always have to be expensive. It, you can do this stuff with very little material you just have to know how to use that material to create a sense of character to create a sense of tension uh, and to create a landscape uh, which i think is what this track does uh, specifically yeah intro is my favorite thing to do i love this but uh intros and second acts are my thing that's how i get most of my placements uh, because I spend a lot of time trying to make each sound matter. Rather than be like, yep, yeah, I'm going to load up this expensive library. Boom, 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 boom. It's not all custom mockups. This is, uh, this is just working with sound. Well, obviously he's working with sound too. But you get what I'm saying. I hope you've enjoyed this because uh, I really enjoy showing you guys uh, my tracks because I like to, I like to reveal the secrets uh, uh, and to show you that actually although yeah uh, I get placements uh, and uh, I'm succeeding in some areas uh, it's something that you can do too it, you know try and find interesting ways to treat your sound you know and you look, check out my mix like I am clipping like bonkers 7.6 uh, yeah, I didn't do any of the mixing for this. I could have done and just treated it. But when I was writing, I was just like, if it clips, it clips. Meh. And I know a lot of the mix engineers and master engineers listening, if you are listening, are going, oh, oh no, don't say that. That's horrible. Uh, but, you know, that's the way I work and it works for me at this stage. Uh, so I would like you to think of a simple riff. Uh, it could just be a rhythm. You know, it could just be a simple melody. Uh, and think of ways that you can make a trailer cue out of that. Uh, if you've got an instrument and a mic, record yourself playing in different ways and see how you can layer it up and develop your own sound. It's a really interesting way to work. Um, and it's really fun. Uh, and this reminds me of why I got into music in the first place, because it's just fun making weird noises. Uh, and yeah, and I certainly have made some weird noises here. Uh, so, if you like the video, click like and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to learn more about writing for trailers, pop on over to the Trailer Music School, where you know you could uh, sign up to some of my courses or some group calls. Thanks, guys. <laughs>